Whether you've been using Photoshop for 10 years or you're a complete beginner, I want to share 20 tips and tricks today that will help you speed up your workflow and get you creating even faster and more efficiently. Some of these are actually quite unknown, so I really do hope this video goes on to help you out. The first tip for today is going to help make your Photoshop just a little bit more visually clear by changing your highlight color to blue. To do this, you're going to want to go down to Edit and then Preferences, and then finally go to Interface and change your highlight color to blue. Normally it's gray, which I do find a little bit dull, but having that extra bit of blue really does make your layer selections pop a little bit more. When I was first learning to use Photoshop and I wanted to erase or delete something, I would go in here and use this eraser and very, very tediously erase it out. But I would actually like you to start using the lasso tool a little bit more for deleting things and especially for moving things around as it's gonna save you a lot of time. To activate the lasso tool, press L on your keyboard draw your selection, and then quickly switch back to your brush by pressing B. And because we will be using the lasso tool a whole lot more, uh, as I explained in my how to draw with the lasso tool video, it's quite tedious every time to reach over from your keyboard from L to B every single time you want to change tools. So I definitely recommend going into edit and then keyboard shortcuts, make sure the shortcuts for tools are selected. And then as you can see, I've changed my lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool and magnetic lasso tool to A. And then the path selection and direct selection tool I've swapped over to L. So this just makes it a bit easier when you have your left hand or right hand on the keyboard and you're not having to reach across the keyboard every single time. It's just a workflow thing, but it really does help out. You can also try to change other key bindings to your liking in that same menu. Now the next tip is when you are cutting and pasting from two different layers, press Ctrl X to cut and then Ctrl Shift V to paste in place. So normally I'm gonna go ahead and you know just isolate the eyes right here in our character. And if I press Ctrl X to cut it and then Ctrl V, you can see that we paste it directly in the middle of our frame, which is not what we want. We wanna maintain the same positioning. So all you have to do is press Ctrl Shift V to paste in place. Coming in at our fifth tip, we have using transparent pixels or rather locking transparent pixels. So you've probably heard of clipping masks you can see I've got my base layer here, one for the clothes and then one for, I guess, skin for Arthur. I mean, he's an animal, but I don't know if he has skin. But if I wanted to add some shading on top of this layer here, because it's already part of clipping mask, if I create another clipping mask on top, you can see that it still affects everything underneath. So a way to get around that is by clicking this little checkerboard here which will lock the transparent pixels and allow us to only paint on this one layer. Now you do have to be careful because it is a destructive workflow. So I would go ahead and recommend you to create duplicates of this layer just in case you mess anything up and you still have the original. Whenever I'm drawing on pencil and paper, I physically move my sketchbook around to get the most comfortable lines possible for my wrist. And you can actually do this in Photoshop too by pressing R on your keyboard to get the rotate tool and then switching back to the brush. If you do want to center your canvas's orientation again, press shift and then drag left or right with your mouse. Coming in at number seven, if you've spent any time flooding a character and creating all of these really intricate lasso selections, you can actually save these and load them by simply going over into select and then save selection. You can give this a name and then finally it'll be saved in. Uh, if you want to load these, you can go into the same menu, select and then load the selection. But a faster way to actually do this is to go into channels, control click the layer that you want. You don't actually need to click the eye here and then go back into your layer tab to have the selection. If you've gotten sick of having to click new layer or for instance, flip canvas horizontal during your illustrations, you can actually give these a hotkey. All you have to do is go into window and then action once that window pops up, click on the new layer icon, name whatever it is you'll be doing, and then you can give it a function key. I like to leave mine on F2. You can also give it a color. Once that's done, click on record and then go into image, image rotation, and then flip canvas horizontal. Now I also did the same thing for new layer. So once it's recording the action, go over into layer and then create new layer. And I've set that one on F4. So as an illustrator, since you know I'll be using those two functions a lot, it's easier to have it as a hotkey and I can use it whenever I want. 
Sometimes in Photoshop, all you want to do is import a whole bunch of images into one document instead of copying and pasting it from your file explorer. To do this, it's very simple. Go to File, Scripts, and then Load Files into Stack. Once you have that, this menu will pop up. Click on Browse, choose all of your images, and then hit OK. The opposite of this is also true, and if you wanted to batch export all of your layers and files, you can go into File, Export, and then Layers to Files. This is super handy. You can change the different um, file extension that it has, and also where you want to save it and the quality. Once all of that's done, go ahead and click on Run. Speaking of layers, these next few are going to be all about layers and layer management, and there are some really cool tips here I bet you didn't know about. No! Layers! Onions have layers. Ogres have layers. Onions have layers. You get it! So did you know that you can actually give your layers different colors? Simply right click any layer and choose a color and pick whatever you want. This would really help with layer organization and I tend to group it based off of things like atmosphere or sketches or characters, whatever it is. Within the layer menu, there's actually a really cool way to organize and see different types of layers. So if I wanted to get rid of all of my empty layers in this illustration, I can come up the top here and click on kind, change it to attribute, and then change visible into empty. And Photoshop is going to very smartly show us all of our empty layers. Now going back what I was saying earlier with color, you can do the exact same thing and sort your layers by color. Just a lot easier to actually go through and manage your layers so that you can organize it and see it how you wish. If you're working on a big illustration and you wanted to find a specific layer, instead of scrolling through and looking at it in the thumbnail, press V to go to your selection tool and then just click and drag whatever you're trying to find. The only exceptions for this, um, as you can see, are some kind of airbrush effect like glow, it's hard to find that layer style on, so in this case I just turn them off and then keep scrolling through until I find what I'm looking for. You can actually duplicate a lot of things in Photoshop by simply pressing Alt and then dragging across. This works for shapes, this works for layer masks, this works for all kinds of things really. Whenever you're trying to warp a shape, it can actually be quite hard to do it freehand and get good results especially if it's something very specific. So instead, did you know that you can actually click on this arch symbol here and go to warp and then explore all of these different kinds of options. Whenever you do click on a new preset, there will be this small white box here and you can click and drag this to see how much of the effect is applied to our shapes. To solo or view only one layer, press Alt and then click the little eye next to it. To view them all again, press Alt and then once more hit the eye. Just be careful if you're soloing a layer not to mess around with any other layer visibility, otherwise pressing Alt and trying to view them all again won't work. So you can see in this layer I have my character, but I actually do have a couple of brush marks here and there that I didn't account for, and it can be very handy looking in to see what you have. Something I didn't really use much in my early days of Photoshop is this little effects panel here. Uh, but since I started making thumbnails, especially for YouTube, there are a lot of really cool options to explore. A lot of these are for text, like drop shadows, outer glow, inner glow, stroke even, and you can go ahead and play around with these to see different looking results. Another tip that really helped me out is that you can quickly fill the color of text by simply choosing a color, selecting the layer, and then pressing Alt backspace. When I found this out, it made things so much easier because I used to simply just double click on the text and then change the color in the text menu. This just saves a lot of time. If you're also ever trying to center text in Photoshop, you'll notice that it actually follows the bounding box of the text itself rather than the lettering. To change this, all you have to do is right click the text layer and then choose convert to point text. And now if I go ahead and try to center my text, you'll see that it's actually done so properly. And last but not least, the final tip for today is simply just using adjustment layers a lot more and you can use any of these adjustment layers here to apply different kinds of effects to your images. To actually implement adjustment styles, click on that little half circle at the bottom of the layers tab and choose any of the options there. You'll notice that adjustment layers also apply everything to layers beneath it. 
but you can group these by putting them into a file or using them as a clipping mask on specific layers. That way you can go back in and edit as much as you want to keep a non-destructive workflow. And the kinds of things that you can do with layer adjustment styles are play around with curves, use levels, use color balance, and I might make a tutorial about this in more detail if you're interested, so please leave a comment down below. So that's finally going to bring us to the end of the video. I really hope that you learned a couple of tips today that you can implement in your own work. And if you have any questions, let me know on my Instagram at DanielEngArt or leave a comment down below. Till next time everyone, take care and stay safe.